There we go. Okay, I'd like to start with a, a bit of a bio. I always like to have notes in front of me so I don't miss on any credentials when we have a guest on the show. So Dr. Karen Kramer, uh, likes to go by Dr. Karen, is a grief recovery expert and resilience navigator who has transformed the lives of thousands of people uh, around the globe since actually the early 1990s. So she's got a lot of personal experience. And with a profound understanding of the human mind, her true passion as a mindset facilitator, speaker, and author lies in helping navigate heart-wrenching losses, griefs, and traumatic events. Dr. Karen draws her inspiration from her book. Uh, if you notice uh, beside her is called entitled Healthy Grief. <laughs> Thank you. From personal experiences, including a broken neck, multiple deaths, two divorces, corporate downsizing, and various life challenges, as well as her son's remarkable, um, her son's remarkable health recovery and powerful client results that she gains. With that wealth of international coaching experience, a profound understanding of techniques that unlock the subconscious mind and her intuitive abilities, healthy grief becomes her gift to help create a better world for all of us. So thank you. So I would like to start with a question uh, on healthy grief, because sometimes we we have these terms and we come to our own imagination of what it means. So when I first knew about your book, Dr. Karen, and, and you were doing the um, promotion of your book, Healthy Grief, a few things came to mind. But as the expert, I'd like you to share, I guess, it's a two-part question. First of all, what is it and how do we possibly do it? Yes. Well, thank you, Sandra. I, I enjoy being here. So thank you for those who are joining as well as those who are watching on replay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start with the word grief first and then get into what does it mean healthy grief? Mm -hmm. So when I say grief, most people think of death and dying. Hence the reason why all of us will experience one way or another, not only our own personal passing, also that of loved ones, whether they are four-legged pets or our beloved humans. Grief is more than just death and dying. It's an everyday loss. So let's start there with the definition of grief. Grief is when we have an event which is partnered with a significant emotion when what once was is no longer, mm -hmm. right? So we have an event where, which can be an external event or a psychological event, which I'll come to, which provides a significant emotion such as sadness, depression, anger, anything like that, when what once was is no longer. So let me start with the back end of it. We have seasons of our life, chapters of our life, like a, a proverbial book. So in the previous season or chapter, we had something. That could have been um, a career, um, a, a financial status. It could have been a relationship. It could have been the pet, the loved one. Uh, it could have been the hope or dream that we had. And then something happens where what once was is no longer. But different from turning the proverbial page of a book and just jumping into the next chapter of our life, there's emotion that goes along with that significant loss of whatever that was that we once had. Now, this can be for those who are empty nesters, those who my first child or my only child or my baby is now going off to work, moving out to college, or I, one of my clients, when she left work and became retired, everyone said, congratulations, mm -hmm. you're in retirement. You could do all these things, but she lost her friendship was associated her social network with that she lost her structure she lost her the finances that came in the, the handling the medical all of that she went into a deep depression because she was grieving the loss of what once was mm -hmm. I even have a client of mine who lost her hope and dream of becoming a mother now I know many ways to become a mother, but for her, she was in her late forties, ended up in divorce, never had children and psychologically recognizing that this is not going to happen in my life. And she was going through a grieving process of that. 
Okay. So grief is more than just death and dying. Now the process of what does it mean to hopefully grieve? So I've also worked with clients, hence the inspiration for this book, who came to me who also had other physical ailments that were going on, anywhere from ovarian cysts to stage two colon cancer and everything in between. And although I wasn't focusing on the health related symptoms that were showing up, as I was doing my deep work and releasing the trauma for their body, releasing those past trauma, those triggers, those limiting beliefs, their body was coming back to balance, including cancers, including ovarian cysts that were miraculously just disappearing. So I realized that although I knew this, it was coming to recognize how much unprocessed and unresolved grief will settle in the body. I don't even say may anymore, will settle in their body. And there's many that are out there like Dr. Um, Gabor Mate, who is a physician who writes about this. Dr. Basil Vanderkolk, The Body Keeps the Score, writes about this and others that unprocessed and unresolved grief will settle in the body. So my focus is on how can you process through these various different kinds of griefs that we may experience throughout life in a healthy manner so it doesn't show up in our body. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So it's all encompassed. It's not just one area. I'm glad that you mentioned that. And even about not having children and retirement, everybody else on the outside looking in thinks, wow, that I wish that was me, right? Like we want to retire and have freedom. But for some people, that's their self-identity, their self-worth. That's what they put their time and energy into. And they don't know anything else. So it can be a very scary thing as well. So thank you. And then you mentioned healthy resilience. And that's a new book that you're working on for 2025 can you tell us a bit is this um to elaborate on your first book or is it totally different it's to elaborate on the first book however it is in itself a standalone book so i am working on healthy resilience the next one is healthy spirit and so they are designed to be a series of books that are out there for healthy resilience, it takes you away from just grief. So healthy grief is about when you are either as a griever or a supporter, you're focusing on that event or whatever it is that somebody lost. In healthy resilience, it's focusing more about how do you build a resilient life so that no matter what loss, challenge, or setback you have in life, minor or major, you have built resilience in your life so you can more easily bounce back. Nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of insight into it? Like a couple, uh, maybe a little bit out of a chapter or something that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I actually do presentations around this. So I have a cup in front of me and you may have heard this uh, this analogy of I'm walking around with a cup and I have, let's imagine water that's in there and I'm walking around and somebody bumps me and I end up with water on my blouse. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, well, why did, why did I get the water on my blouse? Is it because I was holding up the cup because it was the person who bumped into me? No, I have water on my blouse because there was water in the cup. Had I had coffee, had I had tea, and I was bumped, I would have ended up with that on my blouse. So I use that analogy because whatever is in our cup mm -hmm. is what will spill out. Life is always going to bump us. It doesn't matter whether it's a person who cuts us off on the freeway. It's the refrigerator that breaks down just before going into the holidays. Right. It's the, <laughs> you don't get into, you know, you're late to a meeting because you were stuck in traffic. It mm -hmm. could be the minor or the major things. Life is always going to bump us. And I learn a lot more about my clients yes. when life is bumping them because their past traumas, their triggers and their limiting beliefs are starting to spill in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Imagine you're in a restaurant. I'm sure you've probably experienced this, like either in a, a some public situation, whether it's a grocery store, a restaurant, some person 
doesn't get what they want. It's a long line at the bank, but that's probably an old analogy, um, <laughs> or the grocery store or a restaurant and something happens, like maybe the waiter spills something on somebody at the restaurant yeah. and you see somebody who's like, gets mad about what's going on or that person's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. How that person responds to some adversity, some situation that's not as planned tells a lot more about what's in their cup. Yeah. So healthy resilience. Yeah. It's all about cleaning your cup. Yeah. It's cleaning your past traumas, your triggers, your limiting beliefs, so that when life comes and bumps you, no matter what it is, you're not, you're, you're not spilling out all of this that you try to pack in. Yes. It reminds mm -hmm. me of a raincoat here in the West coast. We have a lot of rain and you probably have rain seasons too. When you wear your raincoat and things come at you, whether, you know, you have control or a lot of times you don't have control over it. And as a coach, we're working with anxiety and depression and OCD. A lot of times people want to control things. They, that's the whole purpose behind our obsessions and our compulsions. But I look, I tell people a lot of times my clients or when I'm speaking is put your, you'll learn to put your raincoat on so that the rain will just wash off, like off a duck's back, right? That expression. So yeah. same kind Kind of, I thought of that when you're mentioning that really great analogy. So that's, I'm looking forward to that book as well. I, I want to purchase your, your second book as well. So thank you for that. And um, do you have any idea when in 2025, I know that we can have setbacks with writing. Uh, do you, are you, do you have a goal for fall, spring, summer, fall? I will probably say at this point in time, it'll come out probably between April and June. That is my goal. Well, the, the only reason I say that is there's a lot coming up in the first quarter. Yes, that's right. The book, the book is pop is already uh, the, the book is already there. So when I wrote Healthy Grief, I had a number of people who said, this is great. I want more. Okay. Of course, more also means doing the deep work with me, but not everybody has the five figures to do the deep work with me. And so I created a master class to be able to encompass healthy grief as I was creating the six week masterclass, which I do have available, that six week masterclass, I was adding in a lot of the content that right. now is becoming healthy resilience. Excellent. So that that is the content plus stories that'll be added to that. And that's a benefit by the way. So both with healthy grief as well as healthy resilience, I include stories along with it. So it's one thing to have a framework. It's another thing to hear from other people's stories. And in healthy grief, there is a five stage healthy grief framework. But the framework itself is not like you need, a, you need to do this or this is what happens. It really is a loose framework and it's designed for that. So that then individuals can read those 30 grief survivor case studies find those that they relate to. It may be the person, it may be the type of grief. I have it broken up into seven different categories of grief that is in there from like health to career, to relationships, death and dying, et cetera. And then they can pick and choose. So part of those stories are case studies because I put them against the framework. And then I show how they walk through the framework of to be able to process through their grief. So the reader, whether you're a griever or a supporter, the reader then can pick and choose. They're like stepping stones to their own path to grief from both the framework as well as the stories that are in there. Wow, that's brilliant. And I'm doing the same thing with healthy resilience as well. So I have the framework, it's all there. It's now I'm in the process of collecting those resilient stories same yes. thing, there'll be case studies. So the readers can see how those stories, those very rich stories of people being able to quickly bounce back in life is showing up as compared to the framework that's in the book. 
Wonderful. And you know, it's nice because people relate to different people's stories differently. So they, it makes them feel like they're not the only one going through it. And I think a big, a, a key point in what you just said too, Dr. Karen, is we sometimes overlook the importance of supporting the family or friends or, or colleagues of other people that are, are walking through the journey with that individual. So being able to share many different perspectives helps both the person going through it and the people that are supporting them. So wonderful. That's exciting. And then yeah. uh, the, the next one is, well, as we are going through all of this, how do we set boundaries? Because I remember um, hearing that you have to be selfish in order to be selfless. And when I first heard that, just the word selfish, I kind of cringed because it has a negative connotation, right? You need to be selfish. Selfish means you're not giving, you're not doing, you're not contributing. And a lot of us are people that we, we, we're caregivers, we want to give. So for someone to tell me I have to be selfish, that just gives me right now, gives me, I call them God bumps, goosebumps, uh, because I think, how can you? But once I understood what they meant, it opened up a whole new door. So how do you set boundaries or what do you recommend when you're working with your clients? Healthy I love boundaries. It. <laughs> yes, healthy boundaries. There's so much. I, that, that is actually one of the topics that I have done a number of presentations on. In healthy grief, there actually is, I give, I give some tips based upon that. And then there's a resource section that's also available in healthy grief which also on my resource page, there's a one hour video that I actually walk through the whole how to build healthy resilience or excuse me, with healthy boundaries uh, that is actually part of this. So in Healthy Grief, there is a resource page that I have where you can listen to all the grief survivors and their stories, as well as that how to set healthy boundaries. So I'm going to briefly step back to something that you just mentioned, Sandra, is that the words that are out there, right? Even the context around self-ish and our response to that, any kind of words, we have to start with what is it that, that we are having a reflection on or response to. So for example, if I need to set healthy boundaries, healthy boundaries for what purpose? right? We need to get clear upon for what purpose. Well, in most cases, it means that somebody is violating my values. And it could be something like, I'm, I'm going to the holidays. And I know that that Uncle George is going to ask me all about my relationships and why I'm not married yet. And what am I doing with my life? And Uncle George is is violating my boundaries, my boundaries of privacy, my boundaries of being able to say, no, this is not a conversation I want to talk about. So healthy boundaries typically means that somebody actually is violating your boundaries, right? So underneath that, there may be getting to what is underneath that for me, for example, is it that I'm a people pleaser and saying no to Uncle George may be perceived as me being pushy or me being too assertive or aggressive. So I, when I'm working with clients, also assess what are some things that, what are the violations that are having mm -hmm. and what's preventing me from standing up for myself or pushing back on that violation? Mm -hmm. And what's the belief that's underneath that? For example, and although you just mentioned it, like, for example, if, I, if taking care of myself and the word is selfish, right, that's a belief that I may have about myself around being selfish, where another word may be taking care of myself first, mm -hmm. right, but yeah. taking care of myself first, maybe I was not raised that way. Maybe mm -hmm. I was raised or it was modeled for me mm -hmm. by mom or somebody else that, you take care of other people first. And some of the taking care of other people first means that I get trampled on and I get leftovers. Mm -hmm. So taking care of myself or the concept of being selfish, I have my own beliefs around. So by what are some of those beliefs that are preventing me from setting boundaries with other people? 
So those are just two of them. There are actually six steps that I go through that are in more detail around setting healthy boundaries. Uh, but those are just some, like, for, for example, it's when you are communicating, let's say Uncle George, I'm setting up my boundaries and I'm going to my holiday part, uh, holiday dinner and I know Uncle George is there. I need to be very clear. How do I have a conversation with Uncle George? So Uncle George knows what I expect. He's not going to know if for how many decades I've allowed Uncle George in front of my family to embarrass me by asking all these questions that I frankly don't want. So I need to have a conversation with Uncle George, probably in private, let him know what I expect. Speak from I language. This is what I want, I need. Then also let him know that if you do say or do this in the dinner table, I will, and then state what you will do. You may give him one warning. You may step up and, and step away from the dining room table and leave the situation being clear upon the consequences that'll happen to Uncle George, like being clear with Uncle George, if you say or do this, this is what I will do. And follow through on that. Yeah, follow through. That's a big one. <laughs> right. And the other about another piece that I have around that is know that that if you have gone on for decades with somebody who has violated those boundaries, like in this case, Uncle George, that it may take more than just one reminder, right? Mm -hmm. Uncle George, remember what we talked about. Like, and, and again, if, if somebody honestly loves you and respects you, let's just say, let's leave up love out of it for here, but respects you, they're also going to respect your boundaries, but they need the reminders. Mm -hmm. But if let's say the situation where even after a reminder, Uncle George is still coming back and harassing me as it was before, and I get up and I walk away and that harassment cont continues, that's letting me know that Uncle George is not respecting me as an individual. So there's multiple different layers to setting healthy boundaries. There is a two-way street. Yes, it does start with you. What boundary is being crossed? What kind of beliefs may be preventing me from setting those boundaries in the first place that need to be cleaned up? What is it that I want or don't want? You know, what is it that I want in this relationship? How can I communicate that? Mm -hmm. How can I also identify what the consequences are, mm -hmm. right? Give one warning, but I will walk away. And bottom line, recognize if this person is not re after communicating, continuing to violate your boundaries, then that person okay, may not necessarily be somebody that you want in your life. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And I, I really believe that too. And sometimes just role playing it out. So people are really confident knowing those triggers, like you said, knowing, and I've, I, I myself have had people in my life and, and a lot of times people think, oh, it's family. They're, they're kind, they, they're genuinely caring, but that's not always the case. And it's hard to come to terms with that. But at the same time, you have to be aware of how it's how it's making you feel. And I got really good at being able to say, okay, why am I so anxious now? Or what's causing me to feel frustrated? And you often, by reflecting on it, you can find the, the, the core of where it's all stemming from. So great examples. And Christmas being around the corner, it's always good to have that reminder, right? And being able to coach you and I both coach with clients and be able to help them get through it because holidays are not a fun time for a lot of people, right? For Because of the people like Uncle George in our life. Yes. But we can get through Hi, it. Uncle George. <laughs> we yeah. can get through it. <laughs> Um, and then, so the next book that you're working on at, after Healthy Resilience in 2025 as well is called Higher Self. So um, in that book, can we just uh, kind of wrap up before we open it up for Q&A is what is that book consist of? What does it do and how? If you don't. Yes. So it is about the healthy, healthy uh, or the higher self, excuse me. The book is actually a uh, healthy spirit. So the context being, and this is where it is, this book is not for everyone. I'll mention that right up, up there. It is not for everyone. I am a product of an engineer dad and a clairvoyant psychic mother. 
Conversations in my head can be very, very interesting. So in working with my clients, I am also a hypnotic regressionist. So you even mentioned around getting to the root of whatever it is. I have found both health situations, past traumas, triggers, and limiting beliefs, cleaning out one's cup does not always reside in this lifetime. So as I've been working with my clients, I've also been going back to past lives. What are the root causes which may lead to health issues, which may lead to traumas, which may lead to the way in which we're responding to people in this life? So healthy spirit is looking at the mind, body, soul perspective and also exploring other past lives that may be leading to whatever is going on in this current life. And again, that book is not for everyone. And that is book number three. So in an order, it's looking at healthy grief is grief around a certain event that may mm -hmm. happen as a griever or a supporter and how to help somebody through that. Book number two, healthy resilience is around how to have a healthy life style, right? So we can easily bounce back like that raincoat where the water drifts off of you. And healthy spirit is truly going into that higher self perspective and answering the question about higher self. Higher self is that connection we have with source, whether you call it universe, whether you call it God, whether you, whatever your higher source and higher power is, it truly is that intuition, that one that, that tells you, like for me, there are a number of times when I've gotten out of car accidents, for example, when I'm at a stoplight, the light turns green. I'm about ready to go. And my foot is hovering over the gas pedal and I'm not quite sure why. Next thing is somebody's running a red light. Had I put my foot on that gas pedal, I would have died um, or been in a severe accident given how fast he was going. So one of those things where it's really connecting up ourself up with our intuition so that we're truly living in alignment with our purpose yeah. as well as just safety in this yeah, world for sure well thank you very much that was a lot of great information i wondered if anybody had any questions that um you wanted to open up to dr karen i do uh i do want you to be able to do that now the opportunity presents itself so i'm just seeing if anyone has any questions or if there's anything in the chat now, in the chat, if you look in the chat, I wanted to mention be before we end our session this evening, I wanted to thank you for coming out. But I also wanted to ask Dr. Karen if people wanted more information, where they can go. And at the beginning, before everyone came in, I asked her about her retreats and her different events that she has on. Because when I met her at one of... I was in a mastermind. She was as a guest. She she corrected me. I thought she was part of the mastermind, but she came as a guest for my coach, Dr. Uh, James Melanchuk, uh, in the States. And I just really just fell in love with her concept and what she does. And she was just hosting her first retreat um, in her home. And so she is going to be doing another retreat. And it's in the chat here in the month of March, March 7th, 8th, and 9th, and she's posted the the link there. But um, in addition to that, Dr. Karen, can uh, where would people go to find out more about all these awesome uh, courses that you're, or sessions that you're offering and your information? You mentioned um, even some downloadables, uh, tools that we can armor up because we do need armor, right? We need as much ammunition as we can. So um, can you give us some resources on how to learn more about you? Yes, actually I dropped in two. One was to the retreat that Sandra was mentioning, but I dropped in the last one. So if you went to those of you who are actually watching this afterwards, it's drkarenkramer.com. So drkarenkramer.com. It's in there that gives you a link to various different things. It gives you a link if you want to find the trailer, unhealthy grief, you can also find a link that'll take you to the Villa Vision Wellness and Retreat Center. So being the founder and CEO of that retreat center, it's a spa-inspired, multi-purpose boutique center that we have here in San Diego, California. And it'll take you there to a link to that page, which has more information about the retreats and some of the various different events that we have here, as well as how to work one-on-one -on -one with me. 
one of the things, and it's not up yet, but it will be found on one of those pages is actually all the events and things that are going on. So whether it's the events, whether it's the products and services, as well as some freebies, you'll be finding that on one of those pages coming soon. Okay, great. And um, as I like to ask my guests when I have them at the end of our session, if you were driving down one of your famous highways, Highway 8 in Southern California, and there was a billboard there and you could write anything you like, what would you write for the world to see? I love that question. And what came to me is life. How is this happening for you? common thing to say, why is this happening to me? Everything in our life is by purpose is happening for us. Yeah. Thank you. That sounds great. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for joining us at The Gathering Place. We meet every last Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we do our Q&A every first Monday of the month. So our next Q&A is going to be on November the fourth, I believe, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, if you want to learn more about myself as a OCD, anxiety, and depression coach, you can reach us at www.theocdcoach.com. Send us an email at info at theocdcoach.com. And we are always open since the beginning of time, going into our fourth year now, offering free 15 minute calls for your questions and how we can better support you living with mental health issues. So if you are interested in taking part in our three part mini series on anxiety, we are starting a three week course. It's uh, every Tuesday, it runs November 19th, November 26th, and wraps up December 3rd from 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's on our website. There's pre-registration. There's limited seating, so get grab your spot in advance. And we will see you on November 4th at 6 p.m. for our Q&A. And this recording will be up on our website as well as Dr. Karen's website in the next probably 48 hours. We'll have it up and loaded for you to, to review. So thanks again, Dr. Karen. And uh, I hope to see you. My One of my things on my goals for 2025 is to attend your March retreat in California. So I will be in touch with you before that, okay? So let us know. Okay. Give us, a, give us a heads up when your book is ready and we will promote it on our website as well. I'm wonderful. Thank you, Sandra. Okay. Thank you for all of the of you watching and listening. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.